It all started out as a typical night of teenage curiosity. My friends and I, a group of adventurous souls craving a thrill, decided to delve into the depths of the dark web. We'd heard the rumors, the whispered tales of forbidden knowledge and hidden treasures lurking in the digital shadows. Armed with nothing but our laptops and a sense of invincibility, we set out on our exploration. The dark web was a labyrinth of secrecy and intrigue, a realm where anonymity reigned supreme and the forbidden fruits of the internet lay ripe for the taking. As we navigated through its murky depths, clicking on links and exploring hidden forums, we stumbled upon something that sent chills down our spines, a website featuring live-streamed snuff films. At first, it seemed like a sick joke, a twisted creation of some deranged mind seeking to shock and horrify unsuspecting visitors. But as we watched in horror, we realized the grim truth. The victims in these grotesque videos were people we knew. My heart pounded in my chest as I recognized familiar faces, friends, and acquaintances whose lives were now reduced to mere commodities in this macabre marketplace of death. The shock and disbelief were palpable as we sat in stunned silence, grappling with the enormity of what we had stumbled upon. Questions swirled in my mind, each more horrifying than the last. Who was behind this heinous operation? How could such evil exist in the world? Hiding in the shadows of the internet, preying on the unsuspecting and the innocent. And most chillingly of all, were we next? In that moment, the boundary between the digital realm and the real world blurred into nothingness. The darkness of the web had seeped into our lives, casting a shadow over everything we thought we knew. We were no longer mere spectators, but unwilling participants in a nightmare from which there seemed to be no escape. As we closed our laptops and stumbled out into the cold light of day, the weight of what we had witnessed hung heavy in the air. The innocence of our teenage curiosity had been shattered, replaced by a chilling awareness of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of our digital existence. From that day forward, the memory of those haunting images would linger in the darkest corners of my mind, a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the dangers that lurk in the shadows. And though we may have escaped with our lives, we would never truly be free from the horror of what we had seen on that fateful night in the depths of the dark web. It was a seemingly ordinary evening when I received a message that would turn my world upside down. As I logged onto the dark web, my heart raced with anticipation, craving the thrill of exploring its forbidden depths. Little did I know that I was about to encounter something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. Amidst the labyrinth of encrypted messages and shadowy forums, I received a private message from a user whose username was nothing but a string of random characters. Intrigued, I opened the message, expecting nothing more than the usual fare of illicit offers and shady dealings that populated the dark web. But what I found was far more chilling. The message was brief, yet its contents sent shivers down my spine. The sender claimed to know my deepest secrets, the ones I had buried deep within the recesses of my mind, never daring to speak of them aloud. As I read the words on the screen, I felt a cold sweat break out on my skin, my breath catching in my throat. The stranger's demands were clear, do as he says, or risk having my darkest secrets exposed to the world. Panic surged through me as I realized the gravity of the situation. How could this person know about the things I had kept hidden from even my closest friends and family? Fear gnawed at my insides as I grappled with the impossible choice before me. On one hand, I could comply with the stranger's demands, sacrificing my autonomy and dignity in exchange for the safety of my secrets. On the other hand, I could defy him, risking everything I held dear in a futile attempt to reclaim control of my life. As the hours stretched into days, I found myself consumed by paranoia and dread. Every shadow seemed to hold a hidden threat, every passing stranger a potential informant. Sleep became elusive, my mind plagued by visions of my darkest secrets laid bare for all to see. In the end, I made my choice not out of courage or conviction, but out of sheer desperation. I complied with the stranger's demands, sacrificing my freedom in a bid to protect the fragile facade of normalcy I had painstakingly constructed. But even as I acquiesced to his demands, a sense of unease lingered in the depths of my soul. The stranger's hold over me was unshakable, 
his presence a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of my reality. And so I continue to navigate the treacherous waters of the dark web, haunted by the specter of the mysterious stranger who knows my deepest secrets. Welcome to real life, where everything seems intriguing until you actually encounter it. This piece of wisdom was imparted to me in a chat room when I innocently asked, So, what all do you do? Little did I expect the responses that followed, ranging from casual discussions about awaiting an arsenal match to more unnerving revelations. The truth is, if you actively seek out the dark corners of the internet, you'll inevitably find them. Personally, I spent hours trying to navigate through the labyrinth of links, driven by curiosity but ultimately feeling like a novice in this clandestine world. The dark web is a paradoxical realm. It hosts the mundane, like basic pornography akin to what you'd find on the clearnet, but it also harbors the grotesque, the vile and disturbing content that other answers have likely already mentioned. Drug dealers, hit men, or at least individuals posing as such, and other nefarious entities lurk in its shadows, existing alongside more innocuous discussions and exchanges. What struck me most was the casual manner in which these topics were discussed. References to unthinkable acts, like the availability of videos featuring children as young as three for viewing, were disturbingly nonchalant. It sent shivers down my spine, reminding me of the darkness that permeates this digital underworld. Despite rumors of fabled red rooms, where atrocities are purportedly live-streamed, I found my exploration to be rather dull. A fellow chatter named Ultra Hentai Experience debunked the existence of genuine red rooms, if they exist at all. It left me pondering the veracity of the tales that circulate about the dark web. Curiosity led me to attempt accessing some of the infamous sick sites, if only to satisfy my morbid fascination. Yet, to my surprise, and perhaps relief, Many of these sites were behind paywalls. They demanded payment in bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies, raising questions about the individuals willing to fund such depravity. Are there truly people who pay to witness such abhorrent acts? In the end, my foray into the dark web proved to be anticlimactic. It was a sobering experience, highlighting the banality of evil that lurks in the digital shadows. Perhaps for the average individual, Uninterested in and repulsed by the notion of viewing snuff films or animal abuse videos, the dark web holds little allure beyond its cloak of anonymity. Yet, amidst the darkness, there was one aspect I found strangely appealing, the anonymity it afforded. It was exhilarating to navigate this forbidden realm, feeling like an intruder in a restricted area. Ironically, my chosen username in the chatroom was veteran of the game a title I quickly realized I had no desire to claim. As quickly as I had ventured into the depths of the dark web, I retreated. I uninstalled the apps, Orbit and Orfox, from my device, resolving never to return. The allure of anonymity was outweighed by the moral and psychological toll of what I had witnessed. I have a chat room on the dark web where people accuse me of committing heinous acts against humanity since my childhood, inflicting pain on others, whether they are humans or animals. But I enjoy it immensely, especially when I see them covered in blood. It gives me goosebumps. In one of my chat sessions, I removed the skin of a dog while it was still alive, and my chat room was flooded with messages. People were thrilled by what I did to the dog, and they even sent me money. For me, inflicting pain is not just a pastime. It's a source of unparalleled pleasure. There is a sickening thrill that courses through my veins when I see my victims writhing in agony, their screams music to my ears, and when their blood paints the canvas of my depravity, I feel alive in a way that nothing else can match. One night, as the darkness enveloped my surroundings, I decided to invite my girlfriend into my twisted world. Despite her initial reluctance, I could sense her curiosity growing with each step we took towards my apartment. And as we crossed the threshold into my lair of darkness, I knew that she was mine to command. With calculated precision, I set the stage for our evening together. Soft music, flickering candles, the perfect facade of domestic bliss. And as the night wore on, I watched with sadistic satisfaction as my girlfriend's defenses crumbled, her innocence melting away in the face of my sinister charm. But my plans were far from over. With a devilish grin, 
I slipped a sedative into her drink, ensuring that she would be powerless to resist my desires. And as she drifted into unconsciousness, I paraded her before my chat room, reveling in the twisted adoration of my followers. With each passing moment, my lust for blood grew stronger, until I could resist its call no longer. With a savage hunger burning in my veins, I sank my teeth into her soft, crimson lips, savoring the metallic tang of her flesh. But as she awoke to the nightmare unfolding around her, I could see the fear and confusion in her eyes. She was trapped, ensnared in a web of darkness from which there was no escape. And as her cries echoed through the night, I knew that I had finally found my true calling to revel in the suffering of others, no matter the cost. And with each bite, each scream, each drop of blood spilled, the coffers of my twisted empire overflowed, a testament to the depths of depravity that lay within me. For in the dark recesses of my soul, I am nothing more than a monster, hungry for the taste of human flesh and the sweet sound of agony. It was an ordinary evening, much like any other. As I sat in the dim glow of my computer screen, I found myself diving into the depths of my files, sorting through the clutter of digital detritus. Amidst the chaos, I stumbled upon a hidden folder, its name a meaningless jumble of characters. Intrigued by this discovery, I opened it to find a series of encrypted messages staring back at me. Each line seemed to whisper secrets, urging me to unravel their mysteries. Despite the creeping unease that settled in the pit of my stomach, I couldn't tear myself away. It was as if I had stumbled upon something beyond my comprehension, something dark and foreboding. Days turned into nights as I became consumed by the challenge before me. Each encrypted message was like a puzzle waiting to be solved, a tantalizing glimpse into a world shrouded in shadows. With every line of code deciphered, the reality of what I had uncovered became clearer. A deadly game, orchestrated by unknown entities lurking in the depths of the dark web. Fear mingled with fascination as I delved deeper into the abyss. Each decrypted message unveiled a new layer of the puzzle, each more chilling than the last. I was drawn further into the twisted web, unable to resist the siren call of the unknown. But as the stakes grew higher, so did my determination. I couldn't stand idly by and watch as innocent lives hung in the balance. Armed with nothing but my wits and a burning sense of purpose, I navigated the treacherous waters of the dark web, each step bringing me closer to the truth. It was a dangerous game of cat and mouse, with every move fraught with peril. But I refused to back down, driven by a sense of responsibility to those who had unwittingly become pawns in this deadly game. With each new revelation, I edged closer to the heart of the darkness, determined to confront the monsters lurking within. As I finally came face to face with the masterminds behind the game, a chill ran down my spine. These were not just shadowy figures hiding behind computer screens. They were real people, with their own twisted desires and motivations. But I refused to be intimidated. With courage born of desperation, I exposed their nefarious deeds to the light of day, bringing an end to their reign of terror. In the end, justice prevailed, though not without a heavy toll. As I closed the file for the last time, a sense of relief washed over me. The darkness of the dark web had left its mark on me, but it had also shown me the strength that lay within myself. No longer bound by fear, I emerged from the shadows a changed person, determined to use my newfound knowledge for good. Last year when I first decided to explore the invisible web or the dark web, as a computer science and engineering student, I was genuinely curious about it. However, I didn't know how to access it initially. After searching for a while, I managed to gather the necessary resources. Upon entering the dark web and browsing for about 10 to 15 minutes, I stumbled upon a web page with numerous onion URLs. Intrigued, I decided to visit some random URLs among the hundreds listed. The first URL I visited was a website selling drugs. While I was aware that encountering such content was a possibility, having read about Silk Road during previous research on cryptocurrencies, it still left me slightly unsettled. I proceeded to click on the second random URL, only to find a website offering contract killer services. Detailed profiles of various killers, 
including their code names, skills, success rates, and hiring costs, were listed. Feeling increasingly uneasy, I clicked on the third random URL, which directed me to a website selling human organs. The listings included various organs along with their base prices, allowing visitors to place orders by specifying quantities. Moving on, the fourth random URL led me to a website teaching torture techniques. The videos depicted cruel acts against people of different genders and age groups, some of which were difficult to watch and possibly fatal. Feeling disgusted, I took a break from my computer for about 15 to 20 minutes before proceeding to click on the fifth random URL. To my dismay, it led to a website featuring illegal and banned pornography. Subsequent URLs led to similar content, all of which were available for purchase. Considering exiting the dark web, I decided to give it one last try. However, the nth random link I clicked on turned out to be the most disturbing. It directed me to a website that provided instructions on how to cook people while keeping them alive for as long as possible. The procedures varied based on geographical location, age, gender, and build, with accompanying videos that were too grotesque to watch. Feeling traumatized, I immediately quit the dark web. Though I've accessed it many times since then for research purposes and out of curiosity, that experience remains the most disturbing one. There have been countless gruesome tales recounted by people around the world, but none shook me quite like the experience of my friend. It was a chilling night when he decided to delve into the depths of the dark web, driven by curiosity and a sense of adventure. Little did he know that this decision would lead to a harrowing encounter that would haunt him for years to come. As he navigated through the shadowy corners of the internet, he stumbled upon a banner that caught his eye with its cryptic message, Watch for Bitcoins. Despite the warning signs, his curiosity got the better of him, and he clicked on it, unknowingly setting into motion a series of events that would forever change his life. To his horror, the click revealed a live stream featuring four masked men, their identities obscured by ski masks. The sight sent shivers down his spine, but the true terror came when he realized that his own webcam was activated, broadcasting his unsuspecting face to these sinister individuals. A wave of panic washed over him as one of the masked figures described his features in chilling detail, confirming his worst fears. For what felt like an eternity, silence hung heavy in the air, both parties frozen in a macabre standoff. Then, with a cold and calculated tone, the men on the screen delivered a bone-chilling ultimatum. They had obtained his IP address and would be arriving at his doorstep in 30 minutes. The dread that consumed him was palpable as he awaited his presumed fate, the ticking of the clock echoing in his ears like a death knell. Thirty agonizing minutes passed, each second feeling like an eternity, but no intruders materialized at his door. In fact, the night remained eerily silent, devoid of any signs of impending danger. As the hours dragged on with no further developments, the tension began to dissipate, replaced by a lingering sense of disbelief and unease. Had it all been an elaborate hoax, a twisted prank designed to instill fear in unsuspecting victims? Or had he narrowly escaped a fate too terrifying to contemplate? Though the immediate threat had seemingly passed, the psychological scars of that night ran deep, casting a shadow of fear and paranoia that would linger for years to come. My friend, once fearless and adventurous, now found himself haunted by the specter of his brush with the dark web, forever changed by an experience he could never forget. The first time I heard about the dark web, I was in high school. The very idea of a secretive network within the internet seemed very inviting to the 13-year-old me. I've always had a knack for computer science, so when I first heard about it, it was only logical for me to seek it out. But, that was 10 years ago, and the internet was still very primitive. Resources for self-tutoring were also limited, and therefore, no matter how tempting it was for me to discover this trove of hidden treasures, it took me a while to figure out. I remember the first time I went online on TOR, almost giddy from excitement of exploring the unknown. I navigated to the hidden wiki page with its extensive link catalog. I visited some online gun and drug stores and called it a day. Exciting, but nothing out of the ordinary.
but things got messy the next time I opened TOR. I came upon an anonymous chat site that anyone could use by signing up. The guys there seemed really nice. I told them I was new to the whole TOR thing, and they took their time to explain to me the basics and how everything worked around the network. Take it easy. One of them typed back. So, what are you looking for? I've been hearing stories about the dark web, so I came to check out what the deal was, but it's all pretty mellow, I responded. I guess I was expecting some surprises, but drugs and guns are all that's here. I had given my honest opinion. You're a nice chap. If you like surprises, follow this link. He then typed, and he signed out. The link took me to a private forum. Sort of like Reddit, but more basic. The first thread was an extensive discussion on how to make cocaine from locally available substances. It also talked about different other unconventional types of highs like injecting oneself with a mixture of chloroxylenol, dental, and ground sugar. A user reported that the high was so potent, 12 hours later he was still reeling. Another thread discussed the best ways to have sex with your pets. As gross as it was, the users also posted links to porn sites that had human-animal sex. I had been looking around for a couple of hours when I came across an innocuous-looking link sitting quietly at the comments section with the subject line in SFW. At this point, I had already seen a woman have sex with a horse, so there wasn't really much that could surprise me. Or, so I thought. The link took me to a video feed of a girl sitting in a chair with a countdown clock running at 11 minutes to zero. The girl looked sleepy, possibly drugged, as she looked right at the camera, eyes half open. I had no idea what was going on. The website was minimalist, just a comment bar, and no other frills. I tried typing something but the website told me that I was a guest, and to leave a comment I had to sign up and pay about $50. Five minutes to zero. A man entered the room and started hustling furniture around. The comments section suddenly fired up. There were about 50 other users signed in, and they were all leaving obscene comments. The man came near the monitor, seemed to read something from it, smirked, and went back. It suddenly dawned on me that perhaps this was a live feed. As the countdown clock counted down to zero, Beethoven's Ode to Joy began to play in the background. The man came back on screen this time with a Swiss army knife. The comments section, in the meantime, was bustling with perverse comments. Tear her shirt down, somebody wrote, and in a moment, I saw the man slash through the girl's shirt, making her partially topless. Spit down her throat, someone else wrote, and the man did it. Suddenly, the quantum of the incident dawned on me. There was this girl who was being tortured live for the viewing pleasure of a bunch of sick human beings. I almost felt like throwing up. Hit her ribs with the bat, was the next request. I watched in horror as the man pulled out a baseball bat from underneath the table, swinging it for her right chest and toppling her over by sheer force of the hit. The girl howled in pain as the commentators typed in their ha-ha and loved it once more A's. She's got a perfect nose. Let's break it, somebody typed in. Hey, what happened to waterboarding her, typed another. A chill ran through my spine. Somewhere, there was this girl, locked away in a dungeon, possibly abducted from her family, to be tortured on a live stream and ultimately be killed at the end of the show. I closed all connections, my hands still trembling, as I proceeded to shut down my PC and take a walk to get some fresh air. It remains to be one of my most unpleasant memories. I can still hear her scream in my head as I type this sentence. I still have Tior on my computer, but do not use the service anymore. I just figured I was happy without it. I happened to browse the deep web. This time I started with the deep web search engine Not Evil. Kinda regular stuff I do. However, this time I noticed a button on the engine page, which was of some sort of a game. When the page opened, it was actually a place for people to chat, anonymously. There I happened to find a link which the person who posted said was of a deep web directory. Yeah. It wasn't fake and the website opened. It had links to quite a lot of useful sites like fake temporary email sites and Bitcoin mining sites, etc. Then there was a filter kind of thing which had a checkbox written, show a moral content. For the sake of exploration, I clicked it. And it turned out as I had expected, porn and even child porn site links. So you see, this sick thing is still on. But we haven't reached the sickest part, yet. There happened to be a site called, okay I won't say which as the description said, was the X videos of the deep web. I clicked on it in Viola. 
I lose my sleep for two days, as of now. What I see is horrible. Horrific. Terrible. Series of video thumbnails of horrific, terrifying images. The shock I received set my heart racing. In the brief period of not more than 10 seconds, I see titles like Rape and Death, Rape, Child, Autopsy, and Boy I Was Shit Scared. The images that flashed on my laptop screen made me think, how sick can people be to engage in such nonsense and then film it? I couldn't dare to scroll beyond and ran the fuck off by directly closing my Tor browser window. To this end, I am not going to reveal the name of the website due to ethical reasons. I meagerly share my experiences and I thank you readers for patiently reading them. None of my answers are so highly upvoted as this one. I never had a proper reason to go on the dark web. It all started when I stumbled upon mentions of this mysterious realm while playing a video game. Intrigued by the notion of a hidden corner of the internet, I devoted part of my curiosity to exploring what the dark web could offer. My journey through the dark web was a roller coaster of emotions and experiences. From troll sites to forums to disturbing hubs I'd rather forget, I delved deeper into the unknown, driven by a mixture of curiosity and adrenaline. There was a certain rush that came with clicking on those unfamiliar links, never knowing what awaited on the other side. At times, I questioned whether I had gone too far. The lines between curiosity and obsession blurred as I made acquaintances on the dark web, eager to unlock its secrets. But it was a recent discovery that truly shook me to the core, the preview pictures to what was rumored to be the worst snuff film ever made, attributed to the infamous Peter Scully. The grotesque images haunted my thoughts, leaving me unsettled and disturbed. Despite the horrors I encountered, I found myself drawn back to the dark web, unable to resist its allure. I became a regular in certain chat rooms, exchanging stories and experiences with fellow denizens of the dark. Inspired by what I found, I even began to create my own dark weblog, documenting my journey and sharing my own insights and discoveries. However, as my exploration of the dark web continued, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the back of my mind. The risks became increasingly apparent from compromised safety and exposure to disturbing content to the ever-present threat of accidentally alerting authorities. The allure of the dark web was undeniable, but so too were the dangers that lurked within its shadowy depths. In the end, I realized that the most obvious reasons for staying away from the dark web were also the most compelling. The risk of having my safety compromised, my personal information exposed, and my mental well-being shattered outweighed any thrill or curiosity I felt. As I closed the door on my dark web adventures, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief and a lingering sense of dread for what I had seen and experienced.